This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I recently just bought the Leica M11P with the 35mm Summilux. And for those that have been following my content, you will know that I have been using the Leica Q2 pretty much all of last year. And a lot of people told me that the Q series was actually a gateway drug into the M body system. And they were absolutely right. In this video, I thought I'd share my thoughts on why I bought the camera my intentions with it, but also answer your questions that you sent in over on Instagram. For those that might be curious about the M11P and just wanna know a little bit more. I'll also share throughout this video my first few photographs I've taken with this camera. At the end of 2023, I wandered into the Leica store London with my Q2 boxed up ready to trade in and also purchase the Leica M11P with the 35 millimeter Summilux. One of, if not the dream setup. So why the M11P? Well, I've been eyeing up the M11 for a while. And after I got over the initial hurdle of wanting an M6, the film prices development logistics kept me away from, I realized it wasn't the film photography that I was interested in, but more so the tactile manual rangefinder experience from an M body system. But that does lead on to some pretty obvious questions like why spend 8,000 pounds on a camera body and 3,000 pounds on a lens when if I'm looking for that M body rangefinder experience, I could get it from an M10 or buy a 35 Summicron. There are cheaper ways of going about it. But if I'm being completely honest and transparent with you, I wanted to buy a new camera. I wanted that new camera experience and business has been good this year it was also my birthday the day after i bought the camera so i wanted to treat myself the content credentials is something that i don't know too much about but that could be interesting the internal storage of a 256 gigabytes is very helpful the resolution of the camera obviously amazing the script text on top is aesthetic the no red dot on the front of the camera that's kind of cool all of these things kind of aligned and i thought why not i have the opportunity to buy this new I'm gonna give it a go. The way a camera feels to use is arguably more important or just as important as the results you might get with it. And that is a huge pull for gear like this. Photography is all about the process. I'm sure you've heard that said before, but especially for street and documentary work. 99% of it for me is about being outside, being present, observing the world, getting involved, just taking photos for the sake of taking photos. And if it is all about the journey and not the destination, then I want to experience that journey in the best possible way. Let's quickly talk about this in car language. And this might rub people the wrong way, but I'm gonna say it anyway, because I like the analogy. If you wanna get from A to B, you could choose a BMW, or you could choose a Porsche. If you're extremely passionate about your cars and you wanna experience that journey from A to B in the best possible way, you're more inclined to go for the Porsche, right? And that's how I see gear like this. Even though Fujifilm, Canon, Sony, Nikon, Lumix, are all excellent choices of cameras. Leica have established a premium appeal, similarly to Porsche. Okay, so justification of buying the camera out of the way, let's talk about some tangible specs and reasons why I'm looking forward to using it. 60 megapixels, let's just kick off with that. That's pretty cool. I was using 47 megapixels on the Q2, and I loved having the ability to crop in quite a lot into my photographs, not lose any quality. So with 60 megapixels on the M11P, I can also do the same if I need to. The reason I went with the Summerlux 1.4 instead of a Summicron F2 wasn't any major decision making, except I was looking at prices in the shop, different versions they had. They had a couple of used Summicrons. That's a used Summerlux 1.4. And I was just weighing up my options. I would have picked the Summicron if there was any in better condition, I think there and then. Again, I was going for a little bit of convenience with the fact that I was trading in my Q2 and I wanted to just walk into the store with that set up and walk out with a new one. And a little bit of me is thinking because I was spending that much money, I could just go the extra half a mile and get the summer looks. And the reason why I bought a 35 over a 28 lens, it's negligible. I don't really care too much. I love both focal lengths equally, so. If we're being honest, I'll probably just buy a 28 further down the line anyway. So I've had the pleasure of using various M bodies a little bit. I used an M11 for a few days. I used an M6 for a few days. And I love the tactile manual experience of an M body. So much so that towards the end of 2023, for a few months, I was using the Q2 in manual focus just because I enjoyed that more hands-on experience. Too much autofocus, dare I say it, is a little bit clinical in the process. Now, obviously, autofocus is perfect for getting sharp images, but without it, 
I have to think a little bit more. I'm a little bit more observant and aware of my surroundings and I like that experience. And the result isn't me getting loads of blurry photos or loads of out of focus photos. I've actually found the experience of manual focusing a lot easier than I thought I would. And maybe the three months of manual focusing on the Q2 really did help, but zone focusing with street photography is much easier than you think when you do it for a little bit. And even being um, critical focus or being critical with my focus, it's actually quite fun. It's a nice experience. The viewfinder is excellent on the M11. So the manual focusing experience is easier, less daunting and a lot more fun than I thought it would be. I'd just like to take a moment to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I've been using Squarespace for years, way before they even became supporters of this channel. I've been using them to host my photography portfolio. I sell digital products. I even sell physical products like my book, which I set up last year, and also blogs, weekly newsletters, everything a photographer might need for their website, Squarespace has to offer. To see how I use Squarespace as an example, in December, I went to Andalusia in Spain and I've created a whole page on my website dedicated to some of my favorite photographs from that trip. So I'll leave a link down below for you to check those out as well. Why not at least start a free trial and see what you think? After that, when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Mike Chudley to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Day to day, I do a lot of video and photo work and this camera setup will absolutely not be replacing my workhorse setups like the Canon R6 because the entire point in a professional environment is getting the brief done, getting the job done effectively. The entire point is the result and less so about the experience and the journey, which I was explaining earlier. However, I will be carrying this setup with me in my working environment. Maybe for some behind the scenes work, it could be cool or for some events, but mainly street photography, documentary photography, maybe some more travel work as well for this YouTube channel. That's where the M11P will really shine. I also get the idea that there's some misconceptions from people that have not looked into this camera before. When I posted this on my Instagram saying I bought the M11P, a lot of people were shocked at the no autofocus, 120 frames per second, eye tracking, tilting screen, etc, etc. If you understand the Leica world in general and maybe you have an M body, you understand this goes without saying, that's not the point of this camera. But this might be the first time that someone watches this video that's ever looked into a Leica M body before. So I'm just clarifying the fact that yes, it is a very expensive piece of kit. And no, it doesn't have all the fancy features that most cameras have. Um, that's just the situation we're in. Let's quickly talk about my first impressions. I've had the camera about a week, just over a week. I've been using it almost every single day. I think it's amazing. It's everything I expected it to be. However, I will caveat all of this by saying I am 100% still in the honeymoon phase. So I can't give you any critical thoughts or an official review quite yet. I am simply just enjoying it very much. The colors that come out of the camera on the raw file are excellent. I haven't really been editing the files too much. I will open them up in Lightroom, tweak the white balance, lift the shadows. That's about it. Maybe this is just the direction of my photography going forward, but it was similar with the Q2 as well. I just didn't really overdo the edit too much. I kept it simple, but from the files that come straight out of the camera, it looks great. I'm really happy with it. Something I have actually noticed is the dynamic range. Now this isn't gonna be some Leica forum style review where I talk about the specific science behind the dynamic range. I don't know any of that. I will tell you however that sometimes I have overexposed or underexposed by one or two stops and the file has been recoverable in Lightroom. It's been very handy, very helpful. It's been great to work with. Now I heard that the M10 and other models had some clipping features with the highlights. So it was a known thing to sometimes underexpose your work. The M11 files have been great. The dynamic range has been very useful and very helpful. Um, so yeah, just from my first impressions, the raw files have been wonderful. Content credentials. Let's discuss this very briefly because I'm not an expert. This camera is the first, I believe, in the market to include content credentials verification you might want to say, at the point of pressing the shutter button. So for those that don't know, this content credentials is essentially a digital fingerprint that gets locked into the metadata to prove it to prove its authenticity and transparency about the file, the camera it was taken on. And then as you decide to edit and modify the file and every iteration of use case with the photograph kind of gets logged in the data. So it's traceable, 
transparent and then in a world of AI, this is probably gonna be more valuable. Now, the feature has it. I have the feature turned on. Cool, does it affect my life? I don't know, probably not. But I can't really talk any more about this because I don't know too much. It's almost a little bit complicated or I just haven't really looked into it too much. But I'll leave a link down below. Um, fantastic couple of videos that I've watched about this that educated me. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested in the new content credentials feature. All right, let's jump into Instagram to see what you guys are asking about this camera. Barnaby says, fundamentally, why? Now, hopefully I've addressed that a little bit by talking about the experience of using a camera and the process of, you know, the journey from A to B, using a camera can have a big impact on how that feels. Now, obviously being able to afford it is a massive reason to buy it. I wouldn't put myself out of pocket for a camera like this. There's a threshold of quality of buying camera gear as well. Like. I'd say after a couple thousand pounds, most cameras will meet the expectation of everything you need it to in a professional environment. In a personal world, if you're just a hobbyist, you don't need to spend much money at all. However, business has been good for me this year and I'm so passionate and enthusiastic and I want to experience photography in the most enjoyable way. And I had the opportunity to buy a Leica M body, which is held at such high regard. I thought I'd pull the plug and give it a go. Coffee Photography said, does the coffee taste better now? Absolutely. SP Fried says, do you feel like the image quality is that superior to the Q2? No, I mean, it's negligible at this point. If you're looking for one or 2% improvements, you might be able to find it, but the Q2 was an outstanding camera. It is an outstanding camera. Uh, the M11P is equally, if not a little bit better, but did I ever say it was superior? I don't know if anyone has said that before, but yes, yeah, probably a little bit better. Does it matter? Probably not. Shook Media, shout out Jordan. He says, can you see or feel a difference from the Q2? apart from the focal length. Something I have noticed using the viewfinder is how I think about my compositions more carefully. Whereas with the Q2, it was a little bit more, I'll just shoot whatever, kind of pray and spray a little bit of that mentality because the 28, I know you said don't talk about the focal length, but because the 28 is a lot wider, you've got more room to crop and you can't really make as many mistakes. Whereas with the 35 on the viewfinder of this using the frame lines, I've been maybe a little bit slower than I would be. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think I'm just being more intentional. So the actual use case, I think I'm more intentional. That's probably the best way to put it. James Parson says, does it have autofocus? Yes. K Sears says, do you think it's the last camera you'll ever buy? No. Photo Auto Max, how much was returned into a 35 millimeter fo focal length part of your decision? It wasn't really, I love 28 or 35, so Hacker.monroy says, do you feel like the camera itself is less eye-catching for street photography? I don't think this matters too much because if we're comparing it to other small rangefinder body cameras or even small mirrorless cameras in general, if they're gonna notice an X100V, they're probably gonna notice an M11P. I don't think it's, it doesn't matter too much. I think the focus should be on how you present yourself as a photographer. Your body language and the way you work a scene is way more important than the little metal box that we have in our hands. James Bullimore said, any features from the Q2 you think you will miss? No. Sigma Quadro said, are you worried about the missed shots you could get before with your previous cameras? And a little bit of a mentality or attitude switch that I've had in recent years is to not worry about missed photographs because photographs are like buses. There is always another one coming. So if you do miss something, I just keep positive, keep walking forward and look out for the next thing. Because if you miss something, get annoyed at yourself for missing something, you're looking down at your camera, you're grunting, you're then probably gonna miss something else. So I just keep my head up, I keep attempting to capture stuff, I keep observing, and this idea of missing shots is, I don't ever think about it. Now, being practical and actually answering this question in real time, I might be a bit slower, like this last week, using the M-Body compared to an autofocus camera for sure. So there could have been times where I've missed some stuff, but does it matter? Not really because I've enjoyed the process of attempting to, or at least trying to capture the moment. And yeah, missed photographs. I like buses. There will always be another one. So whether you miss it or you capture it, I don't think it matters because no one will know. If you'd like to hear more from me and my experience with the camera and just more personal stuff in general, then I write a weekly newsletter called The Focal Point. I'll leave a link in the description. It's on my website. You can sign up to that. And it's just an email every week from me about the world of photography and street photography. And I'll be sharing more photographs and more of my experience with the M11 over on that email as well. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.